you know, because last few weeks somehow I've been speaking like this about the clues to awakening. So yesterday I was feeling that I want to see what what are all the clues which are in Ashtavakra. So some something just came from there. So eleven I found so far. Eleven clues to awakening. The first is we are looking for that. Okay, the play is that of the finding this self recognition, right? So we are looking for that. That, as in the I am that, that, T with a capital T, first. That which is the witness of all things. That which is the witness of all things. So Ashtavakra, for example, has said, you are the one solitary witness of all things. So this is what we are looking for. What is it that witnesses all things? So one that immediately came to me is this popular one. You are the one solitary witness of all things. But we can find other examples. And more important than finding the examples is use this clue to look, to look within. Okay. The second is that which remains unchanging. That which remains unchanging. What is the words that came to mind? Was there was yesterday or day before we discussed this words where he said, the self cannot be enhanced or diminished. That which remains unchanging. Third clue is that which is beyond limitations or boundaries. Beyond limitations or boundaries. The words that came to me when I was contemplating this is the words where he said, the, I am the shoreless ocean. Shoreless ocean. Fourth is that can be, that which can only be found in the present or now, that which can only be found in the present. Which means that it is ever present. It does not come and go. It is not subject to time. You see, so Vashtavakra had many times they said, let go of that which is coming and going. Stay with that which does not come and go. Which means what? That it must be here now. Every time we look. Okay. Fifth clue. That which has no desires or aversion. That which has no desires or aversion is beyond attachment. So we just looked at some of the verses. The entire chapter actually is about this. That which has no desires or aversion. Sixth, that which is beyond doership, beyond action and inaction. That which is beyond doership. that which is beyond separation and union beyond both the concept of separation and union eight eight is an important one that which cannot be found by the mind. That which cannot be found by the mind means that which cannot be described or got to by 
concepts, judgments, or inferences. That which is your direct insight beyond any phenomenal perception. Ninth, that which is your direct insight beyond any phenomenal perception. It is your only non-phenomenal experience, if you can call it an experience. It's your direct insight beyond any phenomenal perception, the only non-phenomenal experience. Tenth, that which is the source of your being, that which is the source of your being. So many clues Ashtavatra has given about the arc of consciousness, the arc of the universe also coming and going. That which is the source of your being, which in its unassociated form is consciousness and in its associated form appears as the ego. That which is the source of your being in it, which in its unassociated form is consciousness and its associated form appears as the ego. last one for now and you can add to this list is that which is discovered by following the guidance of the divine presence or the intuitive presence or the Sadhguru whatever terminology we use the dispeller of ignorance the form of that is not as relevant but there must be this intuitive light, what we call the Sadhguru, discovered by following the guidance of the Sadhguru and, and or, so either by following the guidance or, or and by surrendering to this presence, surrendering to the Divine Presence. So similar to what Bhagavan said, inquire or surrender. I feel like this will make a very uh, useful book or booklet for everyone because it captures the essence of most of our pointings, not just Ashtavatra, but most of what we are pointing to in satsang. And sometimes it can be very confusing, the terminology and the contradictions. So then this can serve as a very useful set of pointers for anyone coming to satsang or interested in awakening or enlightenment. I feel like we've captured a lot of, or most of what Ashtavaka is saying, but if you feel there is something missed out, something that can be added, happy to include that in that small booklet that we can bring. Thank you.